All right, continuing on with this uh, evaluation of the alternative media is uh, what I'm going to call it. And um, I mentioned a couple of names, uh, but this really applies to um, the alt media, both spectrums. I mean, not both spectrums, uh, but throughout the spectrum, whether you're a centrist or trying to be a centrist, because um, it's really hard to do that. It's uh, like a lot of other things uh, in life. You're trying to square a circle, but that's not to say that you shouldn't try. It's always good to try to, uh, you know, go... Uh, <laughs> It's, it's, it's usually good not to be um, on the extreme, uh, you know, on, on any given uh, topic or uh, approach. But um, the majority of, of the alternative media, as far as um, I think within the Anglophone, English speaking uh, alt media, is usually right wing. And, um, you know, it's, especially when you get into the, the real conspiracy that runs the world. And and this is something that we all find common ground. I think everyone uh, would would agree that the uh, Rothschilds and the other uh, big families, uh, according to Dean Henderson, there's eight families, and that's how I try to um, uh, you know, I I take his approach. Those those top eight families, and then everyone else um, on on the um, you know descending down on the pyramid comes after them. And it just so happens that six of those eight families are of um, Israeli ancestry. Just uh, an interesting side note. <laughs> but, um, you know, again, we get people calling other people shills. And uh, I'm, I'm guilty of that in the past. And again, I'm going to, I'm, I'm really going to try to not use it, and except for when it, you know, there's this ironclad 100% proof that it applies like when it comes to Alex Jones uh but besides him really it's it's, it's there there are there are others uh the, another one I can think of is a SGT report and any one of them who talk about all these issues and try to pretend as if Republicans aren't involved or that uh conservatism doesn't play its part within it that they're they're all obviously shills or even if even if they don't know it, that's what they're doing. They're they're doing this whole, uh, yeah. There's um the Illuminati or or hidden elite or shadow government, which um, interestingly, uh, Theodore Roosevelt referred to a shadow government, and so did my favorite president, uh, uh, James A. Garfield. He who said that, and I'm paraphrasing that. Um, you know, when you you become president and you find out uh, the people who are printing the money is, uh, is actually in charge. So if you know that and then you advocate politicians and policies that that play along that, that are essentially um, marionettes, they're, they're they're the puppets attached to the strings of these people who are printing the money. And they're not going against them in a covert or in an overt way. You're part of the problem. You are shilling. And uh, to be fair to the to the uh, right wing of the alt media, a lot of them would agree on. Again, they would agree on, the, you know, you shouldn't print money. I mean, even even Ron Paul, libertarian, agrees that you shouldn't print money out of thin air and charge interest. Even, even he agrees with that. But he came up with this other scheme that we've that you know, humanity has tried having competing currencies and um, there have been times throughout the United States history where individual states had their own currencies or banks within those states had currency. So, you know, Bank A has its own money. And if you bank with them, you get their notes. So the, the point is, uh, which is why when it comes to at least for Christianity and Islam, usury is prohibited because right off the top, usury is already bad because you create a group of people who can live without working. And as they say, one of the things I agree with uh, a, a, a proverb from Protestants is that the uh, idle hands are, are the, the, the tools of the devil. And um, I think Elijah Muhammad, um, a famous Afro-American uh, co-founder of the Nation of Islam, actually said an idle mind is the workshop of the devil. So you combine those two you have people who have who can live and, and not only live but prosper and, and, and reap the best of life without having to work. 
they have idle hands and minds put together. So what, what are they going to do? What, who are they going to be a tool for? Exactly. So these people in the alt media, the alt right media, actually, again, they, they're over the target in a lot of cases, but their solution, as, as I said, like with, with, a, with, a, with Ron Paul's solution, instead of having the Rothschilds and the, and the other seven families, your Kuhn Lobes, Warburgs, Rockefellers, uh, House of Windsor, which used to be Saxe, Colbert, Gotha, uh, the Savoys, and these other families, instead of just having those top eight, all you would do is, um, it, it's just like the, um, the, the Hydra effect. You, you cut off, you know, one head and, and more will grow in this place, It'll, you know, exponentially. Cut off one, two, two goes to four, and, you know, you get the, you get the idea. So, and getting rid of these creeps and not getting rid of their system. And actually, one of the bankers, if you want, you know, somebody, uh, if you remember from the Money Masters, because I know a lot of my viewers, my regular viewers are, are well informed and they've seen a lot of these alternative media documentaries. I'm going to have to try to hunt down the quote myself because it's a good, good quote. One of those bankers actually said, you can take away all their money and you leave them the system that they have in place. You leave them with those mechanisms, with their names on top of the, the corporations and the banks that they control. They'll just get it all back. And, and, and an obvious, um, I mean, let's, let's take the example of FDR, who, according to some sources in the mainstream media, taxed the corporations uh, during the Great Depression. He actually taxed the corporations upwards of 90 percent and they didn't go out of business. If you take all the golden eggs, but you don't kill the goose that lays the golden eggs, you know, what's going to, or you take away all of King Midas's gold. So, which is why I'm on the left, which is why I'm uh, primarily, I believe in the uh, ideology and the viewpoint uh, promoted by Mikhail Bakunin, who I will be uh, covering extensively in this upcoming year, God willing. Because if you leave capitalism in place, you're going to end up with the, they'll be back again. And I'm talking about the Rockefellers. They're related. And then there's all those families I name have related families like the Schiffs. Uh, I mean, just so you, you, you take away their money or you, you cut off their hands temporarily. They'll grow back, which is and that's happened in the past. We've seen again. American history is a clear demonstration of that. First Bank of the United States. Second Bank of the United States, 1913, uh, Christmas Eve Federal Reserve. So if you don't get rid of these people and the system that they operate under, you're not really solving the problems. Now, which is why, again, I'm not on the right and, and I don't condone the right wing, it's the conservatism, liberals. Because let's not forget, Democrats, I mean, Nancy Pelosi told you people that she's a capitalist. You may not like her methods, but she's a capitalist. Bernie Sanders, AOC, they're also capitalists. The social Democrats, they're just, uh, <laughs> you know, they're just, they're just uh, more uh, humane. With the, Again, we're, we're being farmed. And um, to be fair to Bernie, AOC, and, and their ilk, uh, they don't want to commit cruelty to animals while farming. And that's how, that's my analysis of that. Oh, and, and by the way, um, uh, rest in peace to Morris, but in the spirit of Morris in this upcoming year, I'm also going to occasionally appeal to donations in the same way that he did. So anything, anything to the PayPal. Um, I have my PO box. I actually got one good donation. So, and, and actually this individual donated uh, so much to me um, that, Every every video is brought to you by this individual. I'm just gonna use his first name. He he's 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 my brother practically. Uh, let's uh, let's call him uh, Reggie. Every video this year probably is gonna be sponsored by him because uh, he's he's done a lot to support this mission. Now back to the content. So you got this this alt media and you have personalities like John, Johnny God is um look like he's going the Brendan O'Connell route and we all know what I think of Brendan O'Connell. Brendan O'Connell, actually, I wonder if he's changed, he probably changed because he realized how silly this sounded, but Brendan O'Connell actually said that uh, his, his solution 
to beating the New World Order is to appeal to the military, members of the United States military. But you see, this is what happens when you, you just can't break yourself away from capitalism and conservatism. And, and, and this idea that, um, and, and to be fair, for its time, the United States Constitution and what this, the founders of, of, of this republic did at that, during their time, it was revolutionary. It was, it was a big, it was, it was a big deal. It was groundbreaking. But here we are 200 years later. It's time to uh, download version 2.0. There, there, that's still Windows 95. This whole notion of, um, like, like Alex Jones says, that the answer to 1984 is uh, 1776. No, the answer to 1984 is 1848. Mikhail Bakunin, who was way ahead of his time, him and his colleagues, who were real socialists, communists, and anarchists, who actually wanted uh, truth, uh, justice, and peace, in the world and who didn't want to be farmed, these same individuals who, they were also against Karl Marx. Karl Marx actually hated Bakunin and, and others like him. Because as I, as I stated in the past, Marxism leads you to the same place that capitalism leads you. Slavery. Just takes a different path to the, to the mountaintop, but that's where you end up. Which is why the uh, Bolshevik regime in the Soviet Union was not the savior of the world. But that, but the, it, it, to give them all the credit, we wouldn't have gotten the space if it wasn't for them. Because, uh, or it would have happened much later. Because under capitalism, you have no incentive for projects like that unless you can make a profit. And if you listen to the likes of Ron Paul and the other right wingers, you wouldn't be able to collect enough taxes or get the acquired skills and manpower to achieve such great things. It's always we the people who carve out the environment, who terraform and who make life livable for these um, elite, parasitic, evil, demonic entities. We make it comfortable for them, and then they just, and our reward for our hard work is to be farmed. I'm gonna cut this video short here, cause I'm, I'm, I'm uh, in the process of cooking, and I think the meat is browning. I hope it's not burnt. <laughs> But uh, I'll pick it up in the next one. It's going to be a marathon day. Uh, thanks for watching. God willing, see you in the next one.